Welcome back, everyone, to our series on the Old Testament. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy Spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we'll be looking at the Pentateuch, or the first five books of the Bible. These are commonly known as the Torah and the Jewish scriptures. What is the Pentateuch? Well, we know they are the books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But they are our initial revelation of God, of who we are and of who we are in relation to God, how he desires to be in communion, in union with us, his creation, and how in the relationship that we have with him, we have fallen so many times. Yet this isn't without hope. We are called to persevere. God still comes back each and every time to renew the covenant he has made with his people. So let us look at some key passages uh, that will help us to reflect and pray with some of the big themes of the Pentateuch, these first five books. We start with Genesis 22, verses 1 to 18. This is the story of God's testing of Abraham. He has just made this covenant with Abraham that his descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. And here we see a man finally receive the son he has asked for. And he takes Isaac with him to offer sacrifice on the mountain. And as they get there, they've brought all the supplies as they were told to, but they're told that God will supply the sacrifice for them. They get there and God asks of Abraham to give his only son. On the surface, a very morbid thing to be asked to do. But the reality behind it is so much greater. You see, as part of what is to be revealed in the New Testament, this testing of Abraham is the very same thing that God is going to do for us. He is going to give us his son, Jesus Christ, and he is going to offer him for our sake, for our salvation, for our redemption. Christ is going to mount the cross and die with our sins weighing down on his shoulders. This foreshadowing of the passion of Christ is very clearly seen and the parallels are stark. But in this, we see a very, very tough reality, a very tough decision that Abraham had to make. Yet he makes it knowing and trusting in God. This passage also shows how precious life is. Because not, not too long before this, we had heard and read of the plight of Abraham and Sarah and desiring to conceive a son. Yet now, this miracle that had occurred for them, it seemed like God was asking to take it away. Yet he only wanted to show that we are to give everything to him. This message, again, shocking, sticks in our mind and reminds us of the love and devotion we are called to have. God then, after seeing Abraham's loving devotion and trust in him, does not allow him to sacrifice his own son because life is precious. Rather, he reaffirms the covenant he made with him. Next, we look at Exodus 15. 
This is where the Israelite people, led by Moses, give thanks and praise in a long song to God for having rescued them from the hands of the Egyptians who had been chasing them down to kill them. This song of praise and thanksgiving in which they acknowledge God as their savior who has helped them to triumph over their foes. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea as Pharaoh and his army drowned. But we see not too long after this, after this beautiful prayer of thanksgiving, these same people crying out against Moses and Aaron and ultimately God for water, for bread, then for meat. And ultimately, these are the same people who will build a golden calf and worship it. These same people who God had rescued, these people cry out in repentance after all these incidences when they suffer because they desire to be once more in right relationship with God. And this is something we will go back to as well. This is an overarching theme found in the Pentateuch. But we continue on with the book of Leviticus. Though mainly a book about laws and ritual practice, there can be found beautiful passages within that as well. In Leviticus 19, we see this positive desire for the law, for how God wants us to be in relation to him and to others. In verses 11 and 12, we see a perfect example of this. You shall not steal nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another. And you shall not swear by my name falsely, and so profane the name of your God, I am the Lord. In this, he is giving a commandment, reiterating what has been told to us already in the Ten Commandments. Shall not steal, you shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. But what is he doing here? He's telling us to give reverence to his name, for he alone is worthy of worship. And we are not to steal. Be grateful for what you have. Though it seems like an external imposition, this is a desire for us to grow in virtue and to grow closer to him. Next, we look at the book of Numbers, which kind of continues along the same themes found in Exodus. In Numbers 21, we hear of the story of the bronze serpent. The people had once again disobeyed God. And this resulted in just punishment. So they are bitten by snakes on the heel. So they cry out and Moses prays and God tells him to build this bronze serpent, that whoever may look upon it will be healed. This once again shows the people's constant movement back and forth, their desire to be close to God, and then they turn away in their sin, in their pride, desiring all these things that are not of God, not trusting in God, Then when they suffer, they desire to come back to him. Lastly, we have the book of Deuteronomy. This is where the people are on the edge, on the banks of the Jordan River, just about to cross into the promised land. They'd been struggling and sojourning for so long, and here they are on the edge, just about to cross over. And Moses addresses the people. And very long addresses, But included in one of them is a retelling of the law. And so the people are given the Ten Commandments again. And they are given the Great Commandment. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9, is what's known in the Jewish tradition as the Shema prayer. 
This prayer was written on the doorposts and gates. It was inscribed in them. And they knew this prayer by heart because they would recite it multiple times a day. This prayer took what was exterior, all the exterior laws that they had been given, all the ritual practices that they were to obey. This took all of that and gave it an interior focal point. And so we pray, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. And you shall bind them as a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So after looking at these passages, we can see the importance of the Pentateuch as it shows God's love for us, his desire to draw us closer to himself into a covenant, an intimate relationship with us, and how it is not just by following the laws he has given us, but also by interiorizing them. For both the external and internal are important in living our life in accord with God's plan for us. The Pentateuch gives us the story of this pilgrim people. It gives us the story, the history, of the relationship between God and humanity. So I encourage you to read and pray with the Pentateuch, these first five books, especially the passages we had looked at in this video. Because I was only able to speak on them briefly, but take the time to pray with them, to see how this relationship was being lived out. Because we see God desiring us to draw near to him. And even though time and time again, we, much like the Israelites, fall away. Because the, the mistakes that they made are very similar to the mistakes we make in our life. That it is only by our sin that we fall away from God. God is always faithful to the covenant he made with us in the New Testament through Jesus Christ. But it is through our sins that we fall away, that we turn our backs on God. God tested Abraham, saved the Israelites from the Egyptians, desires for us not to be prideful, to be grateful for all that he has given us, and continues to give us. And in return, all he desires for us is to love him with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength. So let us conclude with the Shema prayer so that we may love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our strength. Let us pray. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. And you shall bind them as a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Lord, help us to love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. Help us to draw closer to you, draw nearer to you, to desire an intimate relationship with you, to not just see our faith as something we just practice externally, but something we live out interiorly and exteriorly. In loving you with all of our heart, all of our soul and all of our strength, Help us to care for one another, to love one another as you love us. 
We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.